sound of the cell. And I turn the radio up. I hope it's not too loud. Turn it down a little bit. Um, I have some strange stuff going on. This is the, um, the Variac. And I'm down around maybe 15 volts or something like that. And the amperage seems to really vary quite a bit. I mean, right now it's pegged at about 5, and then it works its way back up, and it has a very slow arc to it. It's fluctuating between 1.5 and, and 5, and then it goes back down, you know, but it does, it's not oscillating quickly. Usually it oscillates very quickly, uh, you know, kind of sweeping back and forth when I think I've possibly gotten something, but it, it'll hold at 5 for a while here. And then it'll just fall, and uh, just like that, and then it goes back up again. And it does it slowly, which is I kind of find amazing. And then this is the production that the cell is going through. And this is a, a new cell. It's a one and a quarter inch outside with uh, one inch inside. And the outer part has uh, shrink wrap on it. And the inner part is filled with silicone, so there shouldn't be as much bleeding between the inner and outer uh, walls of the cell. Um, and you can see the different production. That's up at about 5 amps right now. And you can kind of see it pulsing. And then all of a sudden it will drop to about, just drop. So it dropped down to one and a half. And you can pretty much see that. something else I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, this is um, Max Miller's 9XA that I'm working with right here, and like I said, I've added these pots to the uh, to the side. One of the pots, one, the 100K came with it, and I added a, a 10 and a 1, but if I move this or put my hands near it, it changes the, the sound that you hear through the radio. And I'm going to start moving this up and down. All I do is, like, lift it and move it. And I have no clue why it does stuff, but it does. But it can have some interesting effects on the uh, production. You know. five amps right now. And it's producing pretty good right at the moment. But as I move those wires around, it'll change... It changes the sound, and it does seem to change the production of what's going on. Now, it just dropped back down to one and a half. And it's working its way back up again. volts. I don't have an exact voltage. Um, 
but this is kind of what's happening. I did rewrap another inductor, and this is um, another inductor, and this inductor is wrapped. Oh, oh. Um, my diode's hot. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's um, there's there's four layers, and I've put serial box cardboard in between the layers on the inductor, and um, and I had a spacer on the outside when I wrapped it, so I didn't get 14 uh, turns, so I've got 13 turns, and I've got four layers on there, and I don't know um, how to measure the inductance on the coil, I wish I did, um, and I also wish I knew some way of measuring the um, capacitance of the water cell, and I don't know how to do that, and I built this cell so that maybe I can get closer to coming up with a measurement by sealing it from the losses through the side. So if anybody out there has some helpful information about how to, um, anybody has in information about how to measure the capacitance of the cell and the inductance and the capacitance of the inductor, and it would really be great if they knew what the relationship between the two of those numbers is supposed to be because at this point that's I think what I need to gain uh, greater production um, you know I have a few other tweaks that I would like to do too um, I'd like to replace this small diode with a larger diode and um, I think I need to replace maybe you know that transistor with a bigger transistor there uh, to handle more power and we're ordering a new um, bridge rectifier that'll take up to a thousand volts. This is only a 600 volt. So those are some other modifications that I hope to make. So thank you for watching. Clay King.